might be useful to talk about integrated innovation approach. So Grand Challenges Canada sort of is developing this approach for integrated innovation. And you've seen these dots, and Peter talked about it, these circles coming together. And essentially, um, this is really about, so when we talk about that path to scale of your project, from the outcomes to the impact, integrated innovation is an approach that you can use to think about how to get to your impact. And so all of those components that are needed to overcome the barriers along the path to scale. So integrated innovation is really about scalable, creating a scalable, sustainable innovation. So integrated innovation is uh, defined as the coordinated application of scientific, technological, social, and business innovation to develop solutions to complex challenges. So this approach doesn't discount the singular benefits of each of the types of innovations alone. So all of the three types of innovations are very important, but rather highlights the powerful synergies that can be realized by aligning all three. So if you have a scientific innovation, that's wonderful. Um, but if you're able to think of, um, in terms of bringing it to the real world, uh, the social um, innovations that are required as well as the business innovations, that's much more powerful in terms of bringing your ideas or solutions on the path to scale. So, um, also need to keep in mind that not, this is a very individual approach, so each of your projects will take a very individual look at integrated innovation. So it's uh, applied on a project-specific level, so that's sort of the challenge. So, And the advantage that you have is that you're on the ground. You understand uh, the context in which you're working in most. So you understand most what uh, the potential barriers of your solutions may be within all of these areas and the types of innovations that are needed to overcome those barriers. So, <clears throat> so, it doesn't, so the idea is that you're not considering these innovations in isolation, but you're thinking about them at the beginning, at the outset of your project. You're beginning to think about all of these other things. Technological innovation is really the process of developing new or modifying existing products, services, practices, and programs. So this is that part um, that uh, involves the, the evidence. And, and this can be simple. So it doesn't have to be high tech. It doesn't have to be um, highly technological, but it's based on the, the scientific um, or evidence approach. So something very technical might be a point of care diagnostic technology that you're developing. Um, or it might be a new uh, practice, so a modified health service that you're delivering because you're building the evidence or the scientific evidence behind that. So social innovation is um, the ways in which you bring the innovation to scale uh, in specific, considering the specific local and regional context. So, you need to consider and address the key components of society that will be necessary to bring a solution to scale in local communities to influence health outcomes. So this could be, um, and this again is project specific, but health systems, determinants of health, the ethical, social, cultural, legal frameworks, uh, public policies, human resources, um, and there may be others included within this social context. So because you understand your social context in which you're working, you understand what the barriers and the influences within that, and determining the innovative solutions that you need to overcome these, uh, uh, these uh, practices. So uh, this could include, for example, and these examples are not exhaustive, I'm sure there's many more, and I'm sure you've thought of, of others. Um, so maybe uh, your social practice, how does, you know, what is the health-seeking behavior and, uh, in, in terms of considering that? How is, the, how is healthcare delivered or care delivered? Um, it might include the reduction of stigma associated with care, so you may have to have an intervention um, required for stigma reduction, or you may just have to consider that in terms of um, your health service uh, model. And so how do patients get entered into that? Maybe you need to consider how that's built in terms of stigma. So it might not be its own intervention, but it might be something built into the whole uh, service model. So business innovation um, as well. So this is considering the 
development, distribution, and delivery of appropriate high quality goods and services. And this is, the important part is it's really affordably and sustainably where they're needed most. Um, so that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to create a company. Um, it doesn't mean that you know, you're, you're creating a, um, a for-profit company. This could just mean that you know, you're figuring out ways to distribute and deliver in an affordable and sustainable way uh, the, for example, mental health, the health service uh, that you're developing um, in that way. Uh, one thing you can think about in business innovation is that you're defining your value proposition so, or incentives that brings the right players to the table. So how do you, so you're actually determining, so it might be that you're understanding the cost analysis of what you're doing so that you can integrate and, and partner with the Ministry of Health. Um, you're understanding what the incentives are that will bring the key players together. And so that's part of uh, building financial sustainability in this way. So this could include, for example, a novel business or operational models for increased accessibility and financial sustainability or cost benefit analysis, as I mentioned. Um, this could be developing a business case for a market where there is presently a clear value proposition. So these are examples, it's not exhaustive, but um, it may be that you know, you're building a nonprofit organization um, and you're figuring out uh, how that model can work in terms of um, in terms of being sustainable in the long term. So to foster integrated innovation, uh, it's important that end users of the proposed solutions are identified and engaged. So you have to think about who would be the primary user or the client. Um, think about the social commercial value of your proposed solution. So what's the perceived value um, by individuals who'd be using the solution, the families or the community? Um, to understand the value proposition of, of what you're proposing uh, and how they'll, how they'll use it and who will be engaged. Because once you have a clear uh, value, it's, it's more easy to communicate and engage other stakeholders, in, including um, the end users as well. Um, so a business or implementation plan. So some of you are creating businesses, but you may have a clear implementation plan to get your proposed solution uh, into a health system. So that would be uh, part of the uh, business uh, in, uh, planning as well. So why hasn't your solution reached uh, scale? So you need to consider that. So maybe you need a plan to get to scale that clarifies that path. Is your solution sustainable? Is there a way to make it more sustainable? Is something you need to consider. Um, if you simply rely on the fact that, or assume that you know WHO is going to pay for this, that might not be uh, an appropriate assumption if WHO hasn't been engaged or doesn't, you know, doesn't have the right data or evidence to want to be engaged. So you need to think about, um, I, I think we'd all like to think that um, people will be there ready to accept it, but that's, I'm sure you have experience and that's not the case. And so your partners and everybody has to be engaged with the right uh, data and results and engagement to, to make that happen. You also have to consider the ethical or legal or cultural barriers within that. And that's really part of the social innovation. Just as an example, and this isn't a perfect example, um, but just thought it would be uh, useful to run through a point of care diagnostic. And this is very general. I'm not even really saying what the point of care diagnostic does. But, um, so if I think about one, uh, in the scientific technological innovation domain, I'm developing an innovative, simple to use, accurate diagnostic technology for rapid, accurate assessment of individuals' health status in a low resource setting. So we could take David Goldbart's example as well, a, a, a swap, um, to, to understand diarrheal diseases. Um, if you look at the social innovation, so for example, I need to look at the specific local and regional context in which this intervention is being used. So I'm looking at the society, the community I'm looking in, um, understanding the barriers to using that technology. So um, for example, I need um, five, five milliliters of blood for my particular diagnostic technology. And that means I have to take uh, five, diff five vials of blood from an individual. So in my community, people don't like taking, you know, getting their blood taken. It's, you know, 
the, in terms of their belief system, they don't really agree with this. Um, so how am I going to do that? How am I going to apply my diagnostic technology and use it in a real world setting? So maybe there's ways that my diagnostic technology can take minimal blood or um, you know, use a big print of blood for versus five files. So that's part of that goes back and feeds into the scientific technological component um, you know, to, in terms of what I need to do to get this to the real world. So you can see how they feed into each other, that they're not, you, you can't consider these in isolation from each other. So they're, they're intertwined. But for the purposes of this, we, we ask you to sort of think about them in, in different contexts. And finally, um, I'm, I'm testing my point of care diagnostics. And at this stage, it's, uh, it would be valuable to understand how I would produce and deliver this technology um, affordably and sustainably in a low resource setting. So if I develop a fabulous point of care diagnostic technology that's $20 uh, per use, is that going to be something that's going to make it to the real world? Um, probably not. So at this stage, I should consider the cost and affordability in terms of the scientific, technological, the materials that I'm using to develop that point of care diagnostic. So um, it's best to think about these at the outset as opposed to going through the process and developing you know, something that's priced me out of the place I need to use it most. Um, so this is sort of considering that. So um, we don't expect if you're part of a, you know, an academic institution working on point of care diagnostic, we wouldn't expect you to have to develop a company that maybe there are partners you need to engage, and that's true for all of these. Um, maybe there are partners you need to engage in terms of getting that product um, to the market or thinking about the market potential of that product. So you might engage a company uh, in data space, he's working closely with uh, a private sector company that uh, produces a majority of the swaps in the world. So he uh, uses their strengths um, for his own applications and, and, and supports and develops the, uh, the scientific technical components. So um, if we break down the three areas, um, Again, using my example, um, and we say green is a really, really good part, really good in terms of innovation, and yellow is, a, it's okay, um, and red is sort of, that's a major gap. So uh, it needs some work. So maybe at the beginning of your project, you need to start thinking about what that looks like. And so uh, through the process, uh, so GCC works with, or Grand Chambers Canada works with the grantee, and so maybe you start off sort of identifying some of your gaps so throughout your project, and, and what we help you do is start to strengthen what uh, your integration looks like. And so, you know, things that are sort of weaker, uh, we can start to support you in terms of helping you identify the partners or the, or the gaps in expertise. So at this stage, you're really starting to define what your integrated innovation approach looks like. And some will be stronger than others. You may have, you know, you may be strong in technological and social, but the business might be weak. So I'm not every solution will um, have all three, and that's probably okay. Um, but you should consider all three in terms of where you are. So for the, the Global Mental Health Initiative, uh, in your application, you're asked to think about uh, those three components. So what this really requires is a, a bulleted list or a short description of how you think your project is uh, taking an integrated innovation approach. And I think using a simple table might be a more effective way to sort of communicate that to the reviewers. So to help you along that path, um, you've been provided in your package the integrated innovation worksheet. So this is something that you can work through. So it's particular questions that you can ask yourself about your project. So um, how does my proposed solution differ from existing approaches? Is there a scientific basis or evidence uh, for the proposed solution? So you can start to see, and this also might help you develop your proposal as well. So what do we already know? What are the scientific pieces that I still need to address? Um, are there any additional research that's needed? What's the existing research I can build on or evidence that I can build on? Is your proposed technically, uh, technical or scientific uh, solution feasible? And what do I need to do to validate that? So that's part of what your, what your solution or approach is. 
And then in terms of social innovation, how will your solution be delivered to the end user? How will it be tailored to the local context? Um, is it poised for, um, uh, to be up, taken up by the health system or health practice or existing? Can you use any of these existing platforms or infrastructure uh, in the communities that you're working with or countries? Um, are, is there any current political will or national policies that are, are, um, are supporting uh, the progress that you're making? So somebody mentioned today that their country was in the middle of of developing a mental health uh, legislation. So that would be something important to note there that you know that what you're doing if you want to integrate into that, that might be um, important. So also, there's the business innovation component. So thinking about what your value proposition is, what your key differentiator for your solution is in terms of, and this goes back to in terms of the other uh, similar types of solutions, and so why is your, yours the best solution in terms of that? So, um, so if you're developing an internal uh, child health care technology, are there other similar ones, or if it's malarial technology, why would yours be uh, more, why would yours reach the market, for example, if it's a technology versus others? Or if you're, if you're developing a health service that's similar to other health services in your community, why should yours be developed, and why would it be better or worse than what's existing? Um, you can also look at, if this is the case, what your priority market or target market is. And so in some cases, if it's a health service, your target market is really the patients themselves in terms of, and I mean, the ability to, to pay for those services and who's going to pay for those services. So uh, you have to consider that in terms of, of the market, or is it publicly funded? So these are the types of questions that you can ask. Um, it's really something that you need to work through in terms of your own project. So this is like a starting point to, in terms of being able to do that. Um, 